President Trump said Pakistan better get on board with the U.S. as the administration shifts policy in Afghanistan. Pakistan has much to gain from partnering with our effort in Afghanistan. It has much to lose by continuing to harbor criminals and terrorists. Pakistan has also sheltered the same organizations that try every single day to kill our people. We have been paying Pakistan billions and billions of dollars. At the same time, they are housing the very terrorists that we are fighting. But that will have to change, and that will change immediately. For more on U.S.-Pakistan relations, let's go now to former CIA agent Jack Rice. Jack, good to see you again. So uh, Pakistan's top officials are now accusing President Trump of using them as scapegoats on Afghanistan. Is there any merit to that? Yes, of course there is. I mean, the <laughs> Americans are failing in Afghanistan. I mean, let's be clear about this issue. You can talk to the Pentagon, you can talk to his national security people, and you can look at where the United States is. The Taliban is more successful now than any time since 9-11. We have seen that they have increased their control of Afghanistan by some 15 percent within the last year alone. And so to somehow assume that this is a Pakistani problem and not an American slash Afghan problem, I think, is foolish. And Islamabad is, is also uh, rejecting the notion that they harbor terrorists and militants who battle U.S. forces in Afghanistan. But we also know that Osama bin Laden was found almost in plain sight there. So how can they make such a rejection? Well, and again, there is that piece of this, too, is that to what it is that the president is saying. The Pakistanis have had very serious problems with terrorism within their own countries. We're talking about 70,000 injured, 17,000 killed within their own borders since 2001. Incredibly intense in terms of what the, the Pakistanis are trying to do. And yet at the same time, in some ways, they are a linchpin because they actually had to deal with the Americans who came in and killed inadvertently Pakistanis. Pakistani soldiers, and as a result, the Pakistanis actually shut down their own borders and some of the shipping of the United States and NATO, costing the NATO allies and the Americans a hundred million dollars a month. The, so when we look at that issue, you realize that the United States needs Pakistan in some ways as much or maybe even more than the Pakistanis need the Americans. Now, I'm glad that you brought up the way the Pakistanis deal with uh, with domestic terrorism because U.S. officials claim that Pakistan talks out of both sides of, sides of its mouth uh, by supporting extremists who pose threats to state rivals like India and Afghanistan, but play a heavy hand within their own borders. Do you think that's a fair characterization? Sure. Of course, they're, they're talking out of both sides of their mouth. I mean, they really are. Remember, the Pakistani ISI, the intelligence service, they really were the ones who set up the Taliban in the first place. They, they set this up because they were looking to provide some stability within Afghanistan, and to some degree they did. But at the same time, of course, those were the very same people who ultimately helped support or at least hide or at least ignore Osama bin Laden and, and his crew to be able to do what it was that they wanted to do. And yet, at the same time, they are having very serious problems with their own terrorists inside of the country who are trying to destabilize Pakistan. So again, just like the United States frequently talking out of both sides of their mouth when they talk about democracy on one side and supporting totalitarian dictators, and they do, the Pakistanis are having the same problem within their own country. So I guess that's not exactly a shock now either, is it? Can you talk a little bit, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about the, the domestic terrorists that, that Pakistan is facing? Absolutely. You can look at what is going on, not just in the northwest provinces. There have been other parts of the country where you've seen this instability. If you look, look at the Taliban, even within their own country, and al-Qaeda to some degree, they have actually turned against the country itself. And remember, there is always an ongoing tension between the intelligence service and the military and the political establishment. And you look at those issues, and they're pushing back and forth against one another, supporting various factions within the country who will go after the other side of this. We have a brand new leadership in Pakistan right now, and that is trying to establish. Remember, we've never seen a leadership in Pakistan that has ever gone full term. We've never seen one That's who true. hasn't essentially been indicted after the fact. So this instability inside of the country is their own issue. Maybe here's one piece of it. If we look at what it is that, that President Trump talks about, 
frequently it sounds like what he's doing is having an internal dialogue that's political for people in the United States. He doesn't realize the <laughs> ramifications of what it is that he's doing inside of Pakistan or other places. The United States needs Pakistan. And by the way, the Pakistanis are already turning away from the U.S. and turning to the Chinese right now. And that's something that's an absolute fact. And the United States knows that. We certainly need as many allies as we can in that area. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. Former CIA agent Jack Rice.